What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be covering task 4 and task 6. So please take out your notebooks, have your writing utensil in hand, and get ready to take notes. Now I want you guys to look at the whiteboard and copy the note taking diagram which is in red. So the star symbol, the small box over here, and 1, 2. That's the reading passage that we'll be looking at today. The topic is short term memories. Now I want you guys to look at the second sentence. It says, unfortunately, many memories remain only for a short time and are quickly forgotten. Now, if you have reading comprehension skills, you should have noticed that that sentence described to us what short term memories are. This is the definition. Short term memories, which are memories that remain only for a short time and are quickly forgotten. All right. Now, since the second sentence gave us the definition of short term memories, you should have written that down. You should have paraphrased it. And then just relax, just chill out because all you need from the task for reading passage is the definition. Now, when you feel like you have the correct definition organized on the piece of paper that you're given, then you don't have to read the rest. If you have extra time during the reading passage reading time, then just rehearse your response in advance so that you're not too surprised and you remind yourself as to what you need to do. All right, now that we're done with the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. Listen to a lecture about the same topic and take notes. Do you have a good short-term memory? You probably do for some things, yet don't for others. So what makes people suddenly forget their short-term memories? There are a couple of reasons. I'm sure you've all been told something only much to your chagrin to forget it a couple of hours later. Perhaps your friend tells you his phone number, but you don't write it down. You might repeat it a couple of times and remember it with no problem, but an hour or two later, you can't even recall the first digit. Why did this happen? You didn't use that knowledge, so the memory simply decayed. It went away from disuse. Here's a personal example. I went to a bookstore last week to purchase two books I wanted. I had the list with me, but when I got into the bookstore, I realized I'd forgotten the list in the car. Yet, I still remembered the book's titles. However, before I could grab them, I ran into an old friend. We talked about a different book for a few minutes, and then my friend left. However, the only title I could remember was the book my friend and I had conversed about. This new memory was interfering with my ability to recall the names of the other two books. All right. Now, in the lecture, the professor said that there are two reasons as to why people forget their short-term memories quickly. But in the end, um, you, you guys should have also realized that the professor basically gave us two examples. One example was hypothetical, and the second example was something that she personally experienced in her life. So it's two examples, okay? Now, the first example is friend tell phone number, repeat it and remember, but one or two hours later cannot recall first digit because decayed from disuse. So the first example is talking about how you will quickly forget your short-term memory if you don't use it immediately and frequently. Now, the second example says, forgot list of books in car, but still remembered titles. Talked about different book with friend, could only remember because interfere. So could only remember what? The book she talked about because the new memory was interfering with her short-term memory, which in this case would be the titles of the books that she needs to buy. All right, now that we know what I'm going to say for my sample response, let's listen to my sample response. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a couple of different examples to explain the concept of short-term memories. To begin with, when a friend tells you a phone number, you will be able to repeat it a couple of times and remember the number with no problem. However, one or two hours later, you won't be able to recall even the first digit, simply because this memory would have decayed from disuse. Furthermore, when the professor went to the bookstore, she forgot the list of books in her car, but she still remembered the titles of the books that she needed to buy. Nevertheless, when she talked about a different book with her friend, she could only remember the book that she had a conversation about. 
This happened since her new memory interfered with her old memory. To sum up, these were two perfect examples of short-term memories given by the professor in the lecture. Thank you for your time and consideration. Alrighty, I had about 10 seconds left when I was done summarizing the lecture's information, and that's why I didn't say the definition that I got from the reading passage. So the reading passage's definition, or the topic's definition, is optional. It's something that we were able to get from the reading passage, which takes a back seat to the lecture's information. When all is said and done, if you were able to organize a little bit more information from the lecture than your com competition, your competitors, you're going to get a score that's just a little bit higher. So what I'm saying is, if you need to pick one or the other, prioritize the lecture's information. But you should only be trying to say more information from the lecture if you feel confident about doing so. Never ever forget what I just said. All right, now let's move over to task six. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for task six. Please copy the note-taking diagram that you see and pay close attention to the words that I actually decide to write down on the board. It's not gonna be every single word that the professor says. So by the time you're done watching me take notes while listening to the lecture live, hopefully you will have realized that you don't have to take notes on every single thing that you hear or understand. The moment you really, really take that to heart is when taking notes for any conversation or lecture is going to be simple. Understand? All right, so here's the lecture. Listen to a lecture and take notes. I'd like to point out something about art from the past. In previous eras, making art was expensive. Most artists required patrons merely to afford the paint, canvas, and everything else they needed. And these patrons, naturally, kept most of the artwork in their homes for their own personal viewing. This made art inaccessible to most people. The artists, quite understandably, didn't appreciate this, so they came up with two ways to enable the public to admire their work. For one, many artists began using cheaper materials. This let them work without a sponsor. This way, they could produce the art they wanted to and also retain possession of their art. They were then free to display it wherever they wanted to. This naturally permitted many more people to see their work. Of course, one drawback to this approach was that the lower quality of the paint and other materials meant their work often faded quickly. Fortunately, many of these works can now be restored using modern methods. Another thing artists did was to display their art both outdoors and in public places. Remember that artists didn't just do paintings. They did statues, sculptures, and many other kinds of art. Take a look at any cathedral. There is art everywhere. Look at the statues and the stained glass window in them. They're all works of art. And consider one of the greatest examples of art anywhere. Michelangelo's work in the Sistine Chapel. How many thousands or millions of people have seen his artwork? He attained what most artists strive for, for the greatest number of people to admire his work. All right, hopefully you guys noticed that this blank is empty because I, I decided to understand what the professor said here as a really, really minor piece of information because it was talking about how modern technology made it possible for these works of art to be upgraded and remade with better quality these days. And that really has nothing to do with how artists made it so that they don't need patrons or sponsors anymore, understand? So I decided to ignore all of that. Now, since I know that I have done such a thing, I'm gonna be speaking a little bit more slowly than I usually would have, since I know that I probably have less information on the board than I did for any other previous task six lecture that I've listened to in the past. All right, now let's take a look at the notes. I've determined that the most important noun is artists, but I'm gonna add in the past. So the beginning and ending sentences are how artists in the past enabled the public to admire their work. Now the first section says, use cheaper materials so did not need sponsors so retain possession of art and display wherever want 
It's fairly short. I'm going to take my sweet time and I'm going to try to use longer transitional phrases. Now, the second section says display both outdoors and in public places. For example, cathedrals have art everywhere. Michelangelo, so M circle means Michelangelo in this context. Michelangelo's work in the Sistine Chapel is admired by countless people in today's world. That's what I'm going to say over here. Now, if you don't know what the Sistine Chapel is, the Sistine Chapel has the, um, the painting, the, the huge mural of Adam and God trying to touch index fingers. That's the uh, work that Michelangelo painted on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. All right, now that we know what I'm going to say for the sample response, let's listen to the sample response. The professor gave a lecture about how artists in the past enabled the public to admire their work. To begin with, these artists started to use cheaper materials so that they no longer needed sponsors. Subsequently, they were able to retain possession of their works of art and display them wherever they wanted because of this change. Furthermore, Artists in the past also began displaying their work both outdoors and in public places. For example, cathedrals are known to have art everywhere. Michelangelo's work in the Sistine Chapel is a great example of this since it is admired by countless people in today's world. In summation, this was how artists in the past enabled the public to admire their work, which was illustrated by cheaper materials and Michelangelo's work in the Sistine Chapel, given by the professor in the lecture. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's count how many sentences I actually said from the lecture. One, two, three, four, five. I only organized five sentences from the lecture. Now, I'm sure that the professor said more than a dozen sentences. I'm certain of that because this lecture was very, very long. If I had to guess, I would say that this lecture was maybe about 130 seconds long, so even longer than two minutes, which is two times more than the amount of time that we're given to speak. So guys, please, don't just hear what I'm saying. Listen to it and absorb it. It's impossible to say everything that you hear or understand from the lecture. It's simply not possible. This time I'll say it's impossible because it is impossible. If the professor needed more than two minutes to give a lecture, then who are you to expect yourself to say everything that she said within 60 seconds? That's kind of unreasonable, all right? So guys, the key to taking notes more efficiently and effectively is to make smart sacrifices. If you feel like you won't be able to paraphrase what the professor said, then don't say it. You're digging a grave for yourself if you decide to take that risk and challenge straight on. If you listen to something that you don't feel comfortable organizing, ignore it and try to catch some other information that's more comfortable for you to organize. Now, you're going to need some good listening comprehension skills to really do this on your own. So guys, you need to first become very, very adept and skillful in both the reading and listening, section, listening sections before trying to get a really, really high score on both the speaking and writing on a regular basis because the speaking and writing sections incorporate reading and listening passages and files. Understand? All right. I'll see you guys in the next video, and we're going to be focusing on integrated writing. So if you feel like integrated writing is difficult for you, please stay tuned and be sure to watch the next video. Peace out.